Using one of your bubble images, uh, what you're going to do is change the color of the bubble, crop it, and make the outside of the bubble black and white. And that will teach you a number of skills, and you might even really like the image that comes out of it. Sometimes cropping in um, can show you some information that maybe you didn't see in a faraway image, and sometimes changing color or black and white in contrast can help with that as well. So this is the image that I ended up with, just kind of playing with things. I do want to show you this tool over here, the history tool. If you click on it, you can see all of the steps that I took to get to this point. And I'm going to go ahead and lead you to those. So if at any time you want to go back and um, say, see what the bubble originally looked like, then you can go with your histogram. Um, and so it's, it's kind of fun to be able to use. Um, so you can go back and do all of those things um, to your image. I'm going to take you through the entire process. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can um, look at things. Remember, you can always go into View, Fit on Screen, so your entire image fits on the screen. You can also um, show the navigator if you would like to zoom in on certain areas, and then you can move this red square around, some people like that, just so you knew that the different ways that you can do this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a bubble image that is on my desktop. There we go. Okay, my computer was having some issues. Okay, gonna go back on out, open, desktop, open bubble and crop. Here we go. So here's my starting image, and um, you'll see it's very different than the image that I showed you. So the first thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go and kind of play with the brush tool. Here's the brush tool. Um, we can put a lot of different brushes in there. Um, if you would like a small brush, you make it small pixels. If you want a bigger brush, make them big. Um, I'm going to just show you some demonstrations. So I'm going to put it at 182. If it is 100% hardness, all right, then it's going to be like a marker. This is where you can choose the colors over here. Um, so let me do a bright green. So if it is, um, we're going to change the opacity. Um, if something is opaque, then, oops, I'm in blend mode. I'll play with that later. If something is opaque, you can't see through it. If the hardness of the brush is at 100%, then the edges will be hard, like so. Okay. If I go into the brush and I make those edges soft, then it's kind of like a spray can and the edges are soft. It's still opaque. If I change the opacity, then you can see through it. It's transparent or translucent. Okay. Um, if you decide that you don't want a bunch of green eyes on your image, you can go into the histogram and we'll go back to open and you can, you, like go back to that state, you can always go forward too. And these are things that you can delete if you want to as well. Or you can just go up to this point and start over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use the brush to paint on here. Now, if I just use normal blending mode, then I'm just painting directly over it. And I start to kind of cover it a little bit. Notice the opacity is low. Okay. If I was painting on this high, then I would completely cover it and I couldn't see anything. Okay. Remember your history over here? comes in very handy. Um, so one way that you can do this without losing information is go into the blend mode up here, mode, color. And if you're on the brush, then what happens is you can still see all that information. Right? Um, however, if you're not careful and you go outside, then this area that you maybe don't want green turns green. And so you can edit undo as well. If you use this quick selection tool, there's a, a couple different tools you can use, the lasso tool, the pen tool. I'm going to show you quick selection tool here. And you can change the size of it 
But with these, I'm kind of clicking around and I've got these marching ants. These are what they're called. Um, these are marching ants and that is their technical term. If I select too much, then I can go up to the minus area, click in here, select those. Um, this works best if there is high contrast, um, which is good with bubbles. Now over here, um, I can zoom in and add to my selection area right here. I can take away from my selection area right here. Um, choosing the best image, I can make this a little bit smaller. Choosing the best image with high contrast is going to save you time. You can go around um, and kind of smooth things out if you'd like. And so I have that selected. If I go back into brush mode, I'm still on color, I'm still on opacity, I'm going to change a different color. Um, then if I go outside, it doesn't change it. The bummer is, is that with 100% opacity, I lose the sheen. So if I go back and I make the opacity less, I'm going to go ahead and go in 25, see how you retain that sheen a little bit. Um, and if you paint into it with a paintbrush, then you get the colors that you want and you don't paint the things on the outside. Now, I find this a little distracting and one thing that I want you to be able to do is on that outside area, make a black and white or desaturate it. The way you do that is you go back into the tool that made the marching ants. And that tool is, once again, the quick selection tool. Now, those marching ants are still there. I'm going to right click or control click and select the inverse and then see how those marching ants kind of go around the outside edge. There are two ways that you can make that area black and white. Um, and so you can go into image adjustments, black and white, and you can use these sliders and they affect different colors specifically, but only in that selected area. And you can go auto if you'd like. Um, you would have to hit OK to make that change happen. Or um, I'm going to show you another way. So I'm going to hit cancel and it reverts. I can go into image adjustments, hue and saturation, and I can desaturate that area. Maybe I want just a little bit of warmth in there. All right, I can do that. This is also where you can change the hue. You can make that area purple or red or yellow or whatever. Um, if you want to put that back, you just put it at zero. So I'm going to go ahead and desaturate just a little bit. Now I have this area um, still with the marching ants. I don't want to keep that there. It's a little distracting. So as long as I am on this tool, if I control click or right select, I can deselect and then the marching ants go away. Now I find this arm a little bit distracting, but I find this area with these reflections pretty interesting. So I'm gonna go in and crop now you can control your crop ratios right here if you'd like to, or you can go freeform if there's something already in here, like one to one, and you don't want it to be a square, then what you do is you just hit clear right there and you can do whatever you want. So I really enjoy kind of this curve right here, and I wanna pay attention to those um, rules of third and diagonal. So, this has some triangles happening right here, and it has these diagonals. So I want you to think about interesting negative space, rule of thirds, and diagonals that are happening when you're cropping. When you crop, you have to click, yes, I want the crop to happen. And then you have um, a very different image, perhaps, than what you started out with. So I want you to, one, change the color of the bubble. Two, change the outside of the bubble to black and white. Three, crop. And then what you'll do is if you want to save this as a Photoshop document so that you can edit it, I want you to go into save. What will happen then, oh, I've already saved this, if I go into save as, you can either save it onto your computer or save to Creative Cloud. I would highly recommend that you save it to Creative Cloud. If you, pardon me, save it to your computer 
and you have to move computers, it's gone. So save to the Creative Cloud, and every time you log into Photoshop, it will be there. Now, to export an image, say you would like to turn this into Schoology and get credit for your work. What you would do is export it, and you can do a quick export as a PNG. I'm going to call this Color Bubble so that I know what I named it. I already named something Color Bubble, and I'm happy to go ahead and replace that. And um, so if you would like later on this to be a high resolution image that you print, then what you would do is you would export this as a JPEG. And so you would come on in here, JPEG, we would go pretty high resolution um, and change that. And we're not probably going to do that with the bubble, but that's how you would do it. If you have questions, just ask and um, have some fun with this.